Hi everyone, in this video we're talking about natural ways to prevent and treat enlarged prostates. So I want to first quickly talk about why prostates enlarge as men get older. It seems to be due to hormonal imbalances. It's believed to be due to imbalances in testosterone and the more powerful testosterone known as dihydrotestosterone or DHT. So the exact mechanism, again, is not known. It could actually be increased estrogen levels as well. So that is what we know so far. Now, in this article entitled The Use of 5-Alpha Reductase Inhibitors in the Treatment of Benign Prostatic Hyperplasia, this posits that an enlarged prostate is due to elevated levels of dihydrotestosterone. And the enzyme that produces dihydrotestosterone is 5-alpha reductase. So now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about some of the dietary supplements that we can use to prevent and treat an enlarged prostate. So the first one is pumpkin seed oil. So pumpkin seed oil is also known as curcurbita pipo. And findings from this article entitled Effects of Pumpkin Seed Oil in Saw Palmetto Oil in Korean Men with Symptomatic Benign Prostatic Hyperplasia. Benign Prostatic Hyperplasia is the scientific term we use for an enlarged prostate. From that article, it was found that pumpkin seed oil improves symptoms of an enlarged prostate. So difficulty urinating, nocturia, those types of symptoms. So nocturia is peeing at night. And pumpkin seed oil is known to inhibit 5-alpha reductase, which is the enzyme that converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. Now, from the same article, saw palmetto is also known to help with symptoms of an enlarged prostate and possibly to treat and prevent an enlarged prostate. So saw palmetto is also known to inhibit 5-alpha reductase 1 and 2, and it's also known to inhibit the binding of testosterone to androgen receptors. So it has multiple effects. And it has very, very good evidence to suggest that saw palmetto can be used to prevent and treat an enlarged prostate. So these supplements are very good in treating enlarged prostates. Now, another herbal remedy that can be used is stinging nettle. The findings from this article entitled The Efficacy of Stinging Nettle, Urtica Dioica, in Patients with Benign Prostatic Hyperplasia, a randomized double-blind study in 100 patients. It was found that stinging nettle improves benign prostatic hyperplasia, BPH, symptoms. And it also contains antioxidants and anti-inflammatory compounds. So it has some very good components. So again, this can also be used to improve and treat BPH. Now, another dietary compound that can be used to prevent and treat an enlarged prostate is lycopene. So the following comes from this article entitled Nutrition and Benign Prostatic Hyperplasia. So this review article has a lot of great information. So lycopene is a pigment found in red fruits and vegetables. So you can find lycopene in foods like tomatoes, papaya, and others. Tomatoes do seem to be the richest in lycopene. So Tomatoes are a good source of lycopene and can be eaten to possibly prevent and treat symptoms of an enlarged prostate. And what has been found in some studies is that lycopene consumption may reduce risk of and or slow the progression of benign prostatic hyperplasia. So slows the progression of an enlarged prostate. So all very, very interesting, important information. Now, another dietary supplement that can be used is zinc. And the following comes from this article entitled Comparative Study of Serum Zinc Concentrations in Benign and Malignant Prostate Disease, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. So the prostate contains high levels of zinc. Now, there is an association between having an enlarged prostate and decreased zinc levels in the prostate itself. So there is some association here. And it is also known that zinc inhibits 5-alpha reductase and also inhibits prolactin as well. Tea consumption has also been found to be beneficial with enlarged prostates as well, and again comes from that review article entitled Nutrition and Benign Prostatic Hyperplasia. So particularly green tea and hibiscus tea, these may reduce the risk of benign prostatic hyperplasia, a benign enlarged prostate, and may reduce the risk of prostate cancer itself. And it also has beneficial effects on an enlarged prostate and associated symptoms. So issues with urinating, nighttime urination, those types of symptoms. So very important as well. Now another one is Babasu. And the following comes from the article entitled Nanostructured Systems Containing Babasu Oil as a Potential Alternative Therapy for Benign Prostatic Hyperplasia. This is also known as Orbignia speciosa. 
and it's helpful in treatment of BPH in prostate malignancy, as was found in that article. So again, this is also an interesting natural remedy or natural supplement that can be used as well. We can also see that Sir Nilton can be used as well to prevent or treat an enlarged prostate. And from the article entitled Therapeutic Efficacy of Sir Nilton in Benign Prostatic Hyperplasia Patients with Histological Prostatitis After Transurethral Resection of the Prostate. So Sir Nilton is rye pollen extract, so it can be bought as its own supplement. So it improves BPH symptoms like nocturia, which is nighttime urination. And it also improves and treats prostatitis. So prostatitis is an inflammation of the prostate. And it's been shown to improve and treat prostatitis that has occurred after a TERP procedure. So TERP is transurethral resection of the prostate. So that is the surgery that is used for an enlarged prostate to begin with. So doing a TERP, doing that procedure can lead to inflammation of the remaining prostate. And Sir Nilton can be used to actually improve prostatitis symptoms. But what is also found is that Sir Nilton may not actually improve or reduce the prostate size itself. Now, the next two come from the same review article we talked about before. And one of them is vitamin D. So vitamin D supplementation is actually associated with a reduced risk of an enlarged prostate, benign prostatic hyperplasia. And it seems that the mechanism is related to the fact that there are vitamin D binding receptors in prostate and bladder. So increasing vitamin D supply seems to actually reduce the risk of BPH. Now, another one is beta cytosterol. And this is a plant phytosterol. It is very similar to cholesterol in its structure. And beta cytosterol can actually be found in a variety of sources, including saw palmetto and stinging nettle, the ones we talked about before. And it can also be found in other dietary sources like peanuts and corn oils. And it's been found to actually lead to improved urine flow. So it improves lower urinary tract symptoms associated with an enlarged prostate. Some other natural remedies that can be used include Pygium or Pygium africanum. And the following comes from the review article entitled Pygium africanum for benign prostatic hyperplasia. So Pygium is African plum, and more specifically, it's an extract of African plum. And it leads to improved BPH symptoms, including overnight or nighttime urination, nocturia. And it also leads to improved urine flow. So again, very similar. It leads to improved lower urinary tract symptoms that are due to an enlarged prostate. And the last one is Zyshin pill. Sorry for the pronunciation. This comes from the article entitled Inhibitory Effect of Traditional Chinese Medicine Zyshin pill on Benign Prostatic Hyperplasia in Rats. So Zyshin pill is a plant-based mixture containing Chinese cinnamon. And really, there only has been some animal studies on this that have demonstrated reduced prostate size and lower dihydrotestosterone levels in rats. So there does seem to be possibly some improvement in prostate size with Zyshin pill, but more studies on humans need to be performed. So those are some of the natural dietary supplements that have been shown to have beneficial outcomes on an enlarged prostate and even preventing the prostate from becoming enlarged in the first place. And also check out my lesson on beverages and foods to avoid in order to prevent an enlarged prostate. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.